Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lucia and this is Lulu's Leaves. Today I am going to be talking to you guys about sphagnum moss and how I grow my plants in sphagnum moss. I know there have been a lot of people asking how to do it because it's not straightforward. So I wanted to go into that in this video and just explain some of the misconceptions, some of the pros and cons. And I also wanna show you guys all of the plants that I have growing in sphagnum moss and kind of tell you how they're doing and what their journey was like, either being put into it or taken out of it or whatever. <laughs> but before we do get into today's video, if you guys are not already subscribed, definitely click that button down below. And also if you can give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it, that would help me out so, so much. I also have YouTube memberships if you're interested. We have an awesome Discord group chat where we chat all the time and it is a really awesome, tight-knit little community over there. So if that sounds like something that you guys are interested in, definitely either click the join button down below or the link in my description. But with all of that out of the way, let's get straight on into today's video. So the first thing that I wanna say is sphagnum moss is not going to be for everyone. There are so many different ways to propagate and to grow your plants long-term, and you really have to find out the best method for you. And while to a certain extent, some plants enjoy certain mediums more than others, you are actually able to choose what medium works best for you because if you want to be watering your plants every day you have to use a different medium if you want to water your plants once a week you have to use a different medium these are the type of questions you have to ask yourself before you choose the medium that your plant is going to live in sphagnum moss is a really cool option to grow your plants in if you are someone who likes to water your plants about once a week and if you have a humid environment for that plant, that is the best situation. First, I'm gonna talk about some of the pros of growing your plants in sphagnum moss. The first thing that I noticed that is super beneficial for my plants that grow in sphagnum moss is the fact that the humidity around that plant is automatically increased when it is in sphagnum moss. I do wanna make sure that I'm clearing this up. I am talking about damp sphagnum moss. If your sphagnum moss is dry as a bone, it's actually going to decrease the humidity and it's going to be even more dry than a soil mixture would be for your plant. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. I'll get into that a little bit later as well. Another pro to keeping your plants in sphagnum moss is that it's really easy to know when to water, especially if you guys are using clear pots like I do. I really do suggest using clear pots, especially when using sphagnum moss or at the bare minimum, use nursery pots so that you're able to squeeze them. But it is very easy to know when to water. All you need to do is make sure that the sphagnum moss is almost dry. You don't wanna wait until the moss is crunchy because then you're going to run into trouble with the roots drying up and stuff like that. That's not great for your plants. So yeah, you just have to make sure you're watering when the sphagnum moss is almost dry. I do also wanna mention that when you do see the condensation on the pot like this, it's a good indication that you don't need to water your plant quite yet. Another really great thing about sphagnum moss, this one is specifically for propagation purposes, but I find that sphagnum moss is a lot easier for your plants when transferring it over to soil compared to something like water or perlite. Because when you use perlite to propagate, you're usually doing it in a type of semi-hydro way. LECA, the same thing. And water is full hydro, so your plants are growing water roots. But in sphagnum moss, they are growing roots that are going to be very easily transferable to your soil. I still recommend keeping the soil a little bit more moist when you do transfer them over, if you do transfer them over, but it is easier than water, perlite, or LECA, in my experience. Another great thing about sphagnum moss is the fact that you can actually grow your plants in sphagnum 
long term. This actually seems to not be common knowledge, so I do want to make it clear that sphagnum moss is definitely capable of being a long-term substrate. There are some things that you have to do in order to maintain that, being in a few years you're going to have to switch it out because it does start to compact and break down. So you definitely do need to switch it out just like you would soil, but it actually does last a little bit longer than soil in my experience. And the last pro that I wanna talk about, it's definitely not the last pro in the grand scheme of things, but I do wanna mention though that I have less pests when I'm keeping my plants in sphagnum moss. So I'm specifically talking about fungus gnats. While this is a more moist substrate, I don't find that they like to hang out in sphagnum moss as much as they do in soil. And I'm not sure the exact reason for that. I don't know if fungus gnats are there because of things growing in the soil, but I, I really don't know their exact reason for being around. Anyways, I do find that I have way less pests or fungus gnats specifically when keeping my plants in sphagnum moss. So that's something to consider as well, but this might not be everyone's experience. So I wouldn't say switch your plants to sphagnum moss if you're having fungus gnat issues because there are other ways to solve that without switching out your substrate completely. It's also really important that I do talk about the cons of keeping your plants in sphagnum moss because there definitely are cons and it's not going to be the substrate for everyone, especially those who like to neglect their plants a little bit. Although, we'll get into that. <laughs> the first con is that sphagnum moss really does dry out quickly. That is kind of what I'm talking about when I'm saying that if you like to neglect your plants, you might not enjoy sphagnum moss, but there are ways around this. So if you're keeping your plant out in the open and you don't have any insane humidity levels in your room, your sphagnum moss will likely dry out within a few days, within a week, definitely. So that's definitely one thing to consider. You will need to stay on top of your watering if you're not keeping the plant in a humid environment. That being said, if you have an Ikea greenhouse cabinet or if you're keeping your plants in a Tupperware or a big box <laughs> that's clear and humid, sphagnum moss doesn't dry out very quickly and it's actually really great for maintaining the moisture in the sphagnum. And it usually doesn't dry out to that crispiness ever. Hopefully all of that made sense. But basically, if you are going to keep your plant in sphagnum moss and your room is really, really dry, you may want to reconsider putting it somewhere else. But it is great if you're keeping it in a very humid place. Another con, this con is specifically for propagation and transferring your plants out of moss, but it can be very, very difficult to separate the roots from the moss. So especially if you have a plant with really thin roots like a Hoya or let's say a Calathea or Maranta or something like that, that has a really thin root system or a Peperomia, it can be very, very difficult to remove it from the sphagnum moss. So my suggestion is if you are going to keep a thin rooted plant in sphagnum moss and you plan on transferring it, do it before the root system gets too insane. And when you do transfer it, make sure that you soak that moss for a really long time and make sure that it's really, really wet before you start that transfer. And sorry, I don't mean for a really long time, but make sure that that moss is absolutely saturated so that you're not picking off any dry moss off of the already very tiny roots. <laughs> this next con is not really a con, more so just a warning, but you need to make sure that if you plan on keeping your plants in sphagnum moss, long term, like I am with some of my plants, that you are fertilizing because sphagnum moss does not provide the same nutrients that soil does for your plants. You need to add in those extra nutrients for your plants by yourself. So definitely make sure that you're using a liquid fertilizer. That's what I suggest when using sphagnum moss. Make sure that you're fertilizing 
every single time you water, but very diluted. That is what has worked best for me. If you feel like you're scared of fertilizer burn, maybe skip a watering, but it's definitely a good practice to water with fertilizer when watering your sphagnum moss plants all the time. Otherwise, you might forget and then you will start seeing your plant decline and you definitely do not want that because there are so many benefits to keeping your plants in sphagnum moss that you really, really don't want to jeopardize the health of your plant just because you forgot to fertilize. The last thing that I want to talk about before we get into the plants that are currently growing in sphagnum moss, I want to tell you guys that sphagnum moss is a little bit more expensive than just buying a potting soil from the store. And you don't get as much as you would if you were to just choose a soil. But again, there are so many benefits that you just have to weigh the pros and cons and decide if it makes sense for yourself. Hopefully all of that was really, really helpful for you guys. I now want to go into my cabinet and show you guys the plants that I currently have in sphagnum moss and talk to you guys a little bit about how they are doing. All right guys, so we are here in my cabinet right now. I do wanna mention that the only plants that I have in sphagnum moss are in this cabinet because I am not able to keep up with the watering that is necessary to keep these plants elsewhere. So I really am an advocate for keeping your plants in soil unless you have somewhere humid to keep them or if you are absolutely committed to staying on top of your watering. So let's go through and show you all of the plants that are in sphagnum moss. First, I wanna talk about this absolute beauty. This is a brand new leaf on my Anthurium regal. This is one of my favorite plants. It was a wishlist plant for so long and I can't believe how beautiful this leaf is coming out. But this plant has been growing in sphagnum moss since I got it. I'll take it out here for you guys. It did actually come to me with very little roots. I was a little bit surprised because typically the seller that I got it from does root their plants really well before selling them, but this one only had a root, a single root that was about five inches long, and it had four leaves. So two of those leaves did eventually die off because the root system just was not strong enough for those. So this is the first leaf that it is pushing out since I got the plant. And I do wanna give you guys a quick root update because I mean, I just told you it was a single five inch uh, root. And I got this plant, I think it was just before Christmas. So it's been two months and look. So this is one side and then all wrapped around everywhere. We have crazy roots. So this plant is clearly happy in its sphagnum moss and it's making me really happy to see the fact that these roots are growing just so well. And the reason for that is because of the humidity in this cabinet, which drops every time I open the doors, but the humidity in the cabinet also mixed with the humidity that this moss gives off is just fantastic for this plant. So that is why it's been able to grow such fantastic roots. It really is just spectacular. Another thing that I do wanna mention is that sphagnum moss does grow this algae really, really easily. So if that's something that isn't super attractive to you, keep that in mind, especially when it's near bright grow lights, you are going to get some of that green on your sphagnum moss. So yeah, this plant is doing so, so well in moss and I do not plan on transferring it to soil at any point in the near future. I will probably have to repot this guy in the spring because I have a feeling that this pot is going to be all roots really soon. And when I do that, I will just transfer it to a larger pot, but keep it in some sphagnum moss. But this is the result of basically fertilizing once a week, but very diluted. And yeah, here we have a beautiful brand new leaf that is growing and 
there's no end in sight for that growth. <laughs> Next up, I wanna talk about a plant that I have currently topped in moss. This is also a really great option, especially for those of you who can't maintain the moisture that sphagnum moss needs or you can't keep up with the watering that it needs because for a short period of time, this will produce that same humidity in the root area for the plant. But uh, yeah, if you forget to water your plant or you're a little bit late, it's not going to dry out your roots because it's just on top. So that is really beneficial for anthuriums, especially they really do like to have their growth points surrounded by moss. So if you're not gonna keep them in moss, I do suggest topping it in moss. And that's something that I did for this crystallinum for a while. And look at this brand new leaf that came because of that. I did recently take it off because I do find it is a little bit difficult to tell when the plant needs water when you're when you have it topped like that but again it was very beneficial for this plant i also have my anthurium radicans drisleri back here that is growing in moss but this is growing in a worse quality moss than the regal and some of the other plants here so i do want to make it clear that Good quality sphagnum moss is very important when you are deciding whether you're going to use it or not. And it will really affect the performance of the plant if you use poor quality sphagnum moss. And this is kind of the result. There's been no growth, a little bit of root growth, but not nearly as much as the plant in the good sphagnum moss. So I need to repot that one eventually, but make sure you are using good quality moss. This here is my philodendron varicosum that's also doing amazingly in moss. You can see some of that algae again there though. But this one, I honestly, I don't see any new roots or anything like that. Actually, there are some roots there. But this one has really thrived in moss. I got this as a wet stick, so that's why it was previously in moss. And then I just kept it in here because it was doing so well. So I don't plan on taking this one out of moss either anytime soon because I don't want to, I don't know, fix what's not broken, you know? I actually never noticed how red this back was on that leaf. That's really beautiful. I also just recently put this Hoya Australis Lisa in sphagnum moss because it was doing really poorly in soil. And I'm hopeful that this will be good for this plant because you can just tell it's it's not doing well. Um, I think it already might need some water. It looks like it has been soaking that up because it is really, really thirsty. But yeah, I will keep you guys updated on this one, but I don't keep many Hoyas in sphagnum moss for the reasons that I told you before, just uh, with separating the roots. And I don't like to keep these guys in moss long-term personally, but I will keep you guys updated on the health of this plant. And I think the last example I wanna show you guys is here with my Philodendron El Chaco Red. This plant, I actually decided to start air layering. So that's what you're seeing here with this moss. It's just topped on the top of the soil here. And I'm using this in order to air layer my plant. If you don't know what air layering is, I'm pretty sure Ashley from Plant Me Ashley is doing a video on air layering. So definitely when that does come out, you should watch that video. I currently just have this moss wrapped around the places where aerial roots would grow on this plant so that it forces some roots to be pushed out even when their plant is still together and not like just chopped. And I've heard that this can be really, really great for these plants. Even if you're not planning on chopping it, it helps it grow really great larger leaves because it's basically acting like a moss pole without being an actual moss pole. So yeah, I like to keep this moss moist. You wanna mist this so that it doesn't get dry because then it's not going to be doing anything. But it is a really great option. If you're looking to propagate your plant and you don't want to just chop with no aerial roots or if you want to grow some larger leaves. And you can wrap that in saran wrap, but because this plant is so compact, I found it really difficult, so I just tried to kind of stack it there. That basically concludes all of the plants in sphagnum moss. All right, guys, well, that is it for today's video. I really hope you guys did enjoy it. I know there's definitely going to be some things that I missed 
in this video. So if you have any questions, please leave them down below so that I can answer you guys. I will absolutely answer any questions you might have about keeping your plants in moss. But that's going to be all from me. If you guys did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye.